welcome everyone. We have, looks like 51 individuals uh, in the Zoom room with us today as of now. Uh, thank you for joining us for the first academic advisor forum of the spring 2023 semester. Uh, this is going to be a town hall meeting uh, presented by the Academic Advising and Transfer Center. We're excited to have this opportunity to share with the advising community a little bit about what we do, um, what we've accomplished uh, most recently, and some of the things that we will be doing in the future. Uh, Zora Mulligan, our Executive Vice President, uh, is joining us today, and I ask her to uh, just give some opening remarks. So I am going to turn it over to Zora. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me, Ross. Will you give me a thumbs up to let me know you can hear me? Okay, yes. perfect. Thank you so much. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Zora Mulligan. As Ross mentioned, I'm the Executive Vice President. Uh, I'm about six months into the job, and it's been a really interesting six months. I've appreciated just all of the opportunities to learn, which is the, a long way, or I guess a nice way of saying that uh, I've started to feel like I know what I'm doing, whereas in the first couple of months, I, I was really, really just trying to learn. So I want to thank Ross and Kelly and, and the deans who have helped me learn a lot. Uh, I've now kind of gotten past the point of just trying to understand the institution at the big picture level, and I've been having a lot of conversations to help me understand, um, you know, more on the ground how things work and where the opportunities to improve might exist. Uh, that has included, um, you know, individual conversations with a lot of faculty members who have interest in student retention and success. Uh, as well as some leaders uh, in, in student um, success who have lots of thoughts on ways we might improve. So it's been really, really beneficial. As you can imagine, if you talk to a lot of different people, you hear a lot of different things. Uh, and so, you know, beginning to make sense of all of the different opinions that people express, the different research projects that faculty members have, it's been uh, a really valuable experience. So, you know, my portfolio includes retention broadly, and that includes admissions activities, which is what we often think of when we think about enrollment, so admissions kinds of things, but also in a way that I think is um, progressive for uh, an institution. We're thinking about student success and retention as a really, really important aspect of enrollment. Um, if you've seen me talk at a Board of Governors meeting or at the town hall, you've seen me kind of make the point that while our, our freshmen, our, our new freshmen are a really important part of the overall enrollment mix, transfer students are a really important part. The biggest group of students that we need to focus on when we think about healthy enrollment numbers is re returning students. And so making sure that our continuing students have the support academically from an advising perspective and from an overall campus belonging perspective that they need to stick around until they graduate. So, um, you know, again, we, we really focused a lot of work in the spring in the fall semester on just the admissions piece and thinking what can we do better in admissions to make sure that that freshman group, which is so critical, is, is as big as it needs to be. And we have shifted now to talking more about advising uh, and about student success more broadly. So when I say we, uh, I mean President Smart and me partly, but mostly I mean myself and the enrollment steering team, as well as myself and my direct reports. And so Kelly Wood is a direct report to me. She's been a great resource for helping me understand the good work that happens in advising all across campus as well as the services that we offer, why we do the way we do, and what the outcomes have been. So it's been, uh, again, a really, really positive conversation. Uh, the enrollment steering team is also a very important part of that conversation. At the beginning of the um, fall semester, we put together an enrollment steering team that includes some deans, you know, uh, Dr. Wood is a part of it, Dr. Hornberger is a part of it, a faculty member is a part of it. And, and they're tasked with helping me take a step back from enrollment overall and think about, you know, again, where we have the opportunities to, to make the most improvements. And so the enrollment steering team will be meeting next week to start, you know, gathering ideas for what do we think, um, you know, what is an ideal scenario when we think about advising at Missouri State University? What can we do to make sure that advising is a part of a broader emphasis on making sure that students can be successful uh, and really have a sense of belonging and efficacy in their in, in education here? So it's going to be an interesting conversation that will, again, kind of be the beginning of, of the discussion. This process about advising is also running parallel to the bigger university conversation about realignment that John Jasinski uh, is leading in partnership with the deans. And so thinking about 
you know, academically, do we have opportunities to rethink the way departments are grouped together? Or, you know, what can we do to increase student success uh, or inter interdisciplinary research or efficiency or all three through combination of different departments or other organizational changes? So, you know, with, it's anxiety making to know that we're in a time where we're talking about potential organizational changes. From my perspective, the goal is always to make sure that we have, um, that we're doing the best we can for the students we have, uh, and, and to do so in an environment where we don't have unlimited additional resources to invest and we have to rethink some of the things that we're doing. Uh, I would say, although, you know, the, the end of this road is very far in the future, from my perspective, we don't suffer from too many advising resources on the campus of Missouri State University or at any of our locations. And so while there may be some anxiety about, you know, kind of where do I fit in and how will all this come together, um, I don't view this exercise as one of reducing spending by, by eliminating positions. I think that we um, are not overinvested in terms of personnel who help students figure out what, you know, what they want to be when they grow up and what they need to do in college to get there. So I, I, would, I wouldn't say please have no anxiety. I would say, however, only have so much because there will be some change. That's uncomfortable for a lot of people. Um, but I think, you know, again, we've, we've, um, we're not looking at this as an exercise for reducing spending on personnel. So that being said, you know, what opportunities will you have to engage? Um, one, uh, those of you who are associated with colleges will have opportunities to talk with Dr. Jasinski and, and the deans about organizational changes that moves forward. So if you're you know, associated with a college, please think about your dean as a person that you can talk to or your associate dean as a person you can talk to as, as you, you know, share thoughts on how we can do advising better or bigger picture ideas about organizational structure more broadly. But certainly that's one way that you can participate in the conversation. Everyone will have an opportunity to take a survey that includes some questions about, you know, academic organization and the big picture, but also what question, you know, what ideas do you have for how to improve advising? So that's another um, way that you can have some voice. Um, Dr. Jasinski and I will also be meeting with offices across campus to do listening sessions. If we haven't gotten one scheduled with um, advisors and the student success team, we certainly will in the near future because you're a really important group to reach out to. Um, we had our first of those conversations with admissions last Friday, and it was um, great in a lot of ways. One, it's always helpful to just listen, but two, it was also really beneficial to hear the way a group that you might not always talk to when you're thinking about academic organization provide feedback about what kinds of things are students looking for? You know, where do we have majors that students don't have any idea what it means? Um, you know, where, where do we have student interest but no department to meet the demand? So it was a great illustration of the important things you learn when you listen to people that aren't always part of the conversation. So that will extend to you as well. Um, and then, you know, again, the, the conversation will primarily continue through the enrollment steering team. As we start to gather all of these inputs and think about, you know, what are the themes? What, what seems to resonate most with people? What do we as an enrollment steering team think makes the most sense? We probably will have a couple of significant changes that are possible options. Um, and those, you know, just as is the case with the academic side of the house in terms of how departments are organized. And so John and I will be out, you know, kind of on the road in campus talking with people about the pros and cons of different, you know, potential organizational changes. So it is a time of huge change. I think a lot of people are like, wait, I didn't know this was going to involve my area too. <laughs> but it's going to, you know, Missouri State has... Um, had a long tradition of making a lot of really important changes at the policy level over time. So, you know, groups like yours are always engaged in thinking about how can we update our policies and practices to serve students more effectively. But we don't always take a step back and look at the big picture and say organizationally, if you're at a minute where you've got a president who's willing to entertain some big ideas, what could we do? So we're at that minute. Um, I hang in there. It's going to be, you know, changes anxiety making, and I don't want to underplay that. But I think at the end of this, hopefully we have something um, that that is an even better than what we currently have model for students and one where um, individual advisors who are part of that overall framework 
continue to feel great about what they do and like they've contributed to something that's even a little bit better. So uh, there is a lot. Uh, I'm also open, you know, if you want to send me an email and sit down and talk with me or you want to pitch a big idea, I'm open to it. Um, right now in the middle of a bunch of faculty meetings that have been interesting, um, but I'm interested in hearing from staff too. So please feel free to reach out. Give me your half hour pitch. <laughs> if you have a big idea, I want to hear it. Um, so I'm open for questions. Uh, any Anything that you want to throw at me is fine, um, starting now. Thank you, Zora, for, for your remarks. Um, this would be a good segue. We'll be, we, will be, we will be using the chat feature for Q&A. So if you have questions specifically for Zora, uh, you can use the chat feature and we can forward those to her if need be. Um, so to start off, my name is Justin Johns, and I'd like to personally welcome everyone to the 2023 Academic Advising and Transfer Center Town Hall. Uh, we're excited to have an opportunity to share with everyone a little bit about what we do in the Advisement Center, and then also things that we're currently working on for the future. So here's our agenda for the day. Uh, we'll start off with introductions from the Advisement staff and then segue into really what we do uh, as an Advisement Center. Uh, we'll talk about many of the new things uh, that have changed in our office since the last town hall in 2021. Uh, we'll wrap up with what's to come. We've got a lot of cool things uh, that we're planning for the future uh, in hopes to roll out over the next year. So we're gonna share those with you. Uh, and then of course, with time allowed, we will have a Q and A portion. Uh, I again, encourage everyone to use the chat feature to ask questions. If for some reason we don't have enough time to answer every question at the end, uh, we will be um, getting those questions and answering them, and then we will send them out via email to all attendees today. Uh, so to start us off, I'm going to pass it off to Gates Breedlove, who will begin the introduction part. Thank you, Justin. Um, hello, everyone. As Justin said, my name is Gates Breedlove. Um, I'm an academic advisor here in the AATC. I've worked full time in this office for a little over a year now. Um, I primarily advise undeclared students, Bachelor of General Studies students, and I'm also a point of contact for either future or current UMKC pharmacy students who are wanting to learn more about our reverse transfer program. Hi, I'm next on the list. I'm Ginny Caps, also an advisor who's worked here a little over a year. I see Bachelor of General Studies students, undeclared students. I'm also the lead SOAR advisor and the lead facilitator for the Advising Basics Workshop. Nice to see you all. Good afternoon, I'm Teresa Cunningham and I'm the newest member of the Academic Advising and Transfer Center. I've been here exactly six months today and I advise undeclared students and I oversee the pre-college dual enrollment program, um, which is different from dual credit and I'll talk about those differences here in a little bit. And good afternoon again. I'm Ross Hawkins. I'm the director of the Academic Advising and Transfer Center. Uh, like everyone else in the office, I do meet with undeclared students. I also am the primary advisor for the individualized major. Uh, I also work with students who have been suspended uh, from the university for academic reasons, and they are uh, looking to return. Um, the last thing that I do, uh, I oversee the advisor training and development program known as the Master Advisor Program. Hello again, I'm Justin John from the Associate Director in the Academic Advising and Transfer Center. Uh, much like uh, Zora, this is my six months uh, in this role, but I've been at uh, Missouri State for um, just a little over 10 years. Uh, in addition to advising undeclared students, I also coordinate our Bachelor's of General Studies program, uh, so I advise those students as well. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Campbell Keel. I am the coordinator of transfer initiatives in the AATC, and I've been at the university for about four years now. I have the pleasure of working with transfer students who come into the university as undeclared or pre-law, as well as transfer students interested in the Bachelor of General Studies program. 
Hello, I'm Donna Redman. I am the OTC MSU Transfer Specialist. I've been with the university for 25 years, both full-time and part-time through the Office of Admissions and most recently through the Academic Advising and Transfer Center. I have a unique role with the university in that I am nearly full-time on OTC's campus and I serve as a resource and advisor for OTC students, admission counselors, navigators, faculty, and administrators to all six OTC campus locations. Hi everyone, my name is Kim Stagner and I'm the coordinator of Student Success Initiatives in the Academic Advising and Transfer Center. I have been at the university for 21 years. I too work with undeclared students along with our Jumpstart and Individual Review students who are students who have been conditionally admitted to Missouri State. I also work with our Bear Power students who are students with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And I also oversee our appeals process for our office. Hi, I'm Katie Tucker. I'm the Administrative Specialist in the Academic Advising and Transfer Center. I've been at the university for 15 years, full-time, part-time, back to full-time in the last year. Um, I spent a chunk of my time changing majors for students assigning advisors, um, as well as just assisting with projects that are needed in the office. Hello, I'm Darren Weinberg. Um, I've been on campus. This is year number 29 through undergrad, grad school, and full-time, uh, working with our undeclared students and especially those interested in health fields as they choose majors to move on to that next level of education. Um, also work a lot with our technology systems, our text messaging system, online booking calendars, um, and just about anything else that involves a computer. All right, so all of the staff in the Academic Advising and Transfer Center play a vital role in the many functions of our office. Uh, in addition to advising students, we also provide training and development to the campus community, along with a number of events and services. And so we'll go into a little bit more detail about each of these topics. So just as kind of an overview of the student populations that our office works with, um, primarily it is undeclared students and we'll be going over each of these groups kind of later, but um, we also work with some specialized populations, uh, Jumpstart and individual review students, as well as Bear Power students. We also work with pre-college students participating in dual enrollment specifically. Uh, we see all pre-professional undeclared students, so kind of helping them choose a major for their pre-professional interest. We see all undeclared transfer students, and our office also houses interdisciplinary programs, including the individualized major and Bachelor of General Studies. So as mentioned before, I do work with our Jumpstart students. So what is Jumpstart? So these are for students who do not meet the freshman admission requirements to um, be admitted to Missouri State. So they do get the opportunity to prove themselves academically by enrolling in this program. Um, if successful, they are able to continue in the fall semester, but they must meet requirements during the fall as well. So during the summer, they do take seven credit hours, including two general education courses and a one hour study skills class. And these classes are specifically reserved for these students. They also get to utilize the campus resources, navigate the campus, participate in fun activities, and of course, create new friendships. So this gives them the opportunity um, just to get acclimated to college life before that intimidating fall semester. Now, who can participate in this program? It is geared for those students graduating during the spring semester from high school. Um, and again, they do not meet those admission requirements based off of GPA, class rank, or test scores. They do need to meet the core curriculum of the Missouri State University admission requirements though. So again, this gives the students the opportunity to be a bear like other students. It gives them that second chance because we want everyone to have that opportunity. Now, I also work with our individual review students, which is a little different than our Jumpstart students. 
but they also do not meet those standard admission requirements to be admitted. Um, however, during the admission process, we do feel that they can be successful at Missouri State under the individual review status. So under this status, students do need to remain undeclared and complete 12 credit hours with a 2.0 GPA. If they meet these requirements, they'll no longer be individual review and they can go ahead and declare their major that upcoming semester. Now, a few times you may encounter these students across campus because of you'll identify these students with the AO hold. Um, sometimes we have students who enter into the university under individual review, but last minute they decide to go elsewhere, maybe a community college. They decide to return, but they're a transfer student now instead of an individual review student. So if you ever have this, you just need to reach out to the Academic Advising and Transfer Center. I'll check their status and remove that hold. You may also encounter this if a student enters in under individual review, unknowingly declares their major, meets with the major advisor, and then the AO hold gets you. Um, so at that time, the student just needs to set up an appointment with me and I will help them with registration. And I always like to make a note that, of course, I'll always ask them about their major interests, so then I will direct them towards those classes for their major. And then finally, I also work with our Bear Power students, and this stands for Promoting Opportunities for Work, Education, and Resilience. So again, this is for students with intellectual and developmental disabilities. So students, um, when they come here, they're here for two and a half years. And during that time, it's a combination of college coursework. I help assist them with six hours each semester. They'll take Bear Power academic support sessions, and they'll also get an internship opportunity. So when they first um, enter into Missouri State, they will need to choose an emphasis based off of their career interest. So when I'm aware of that interest, then I select classes that are foundational courses, courses that will help benefit them towards their career interest. I've seen many different areas such as uh, media and film, information technology, hospitality, just many areas. Um, once they graduate, they will get a certificate in that area of emphasis, so they do have a credential. So again, this is just a great opportunity for these students to come to campus, live on campus, take classes, pretty much just experience what other students are experiencing here at Missouri State. Hello again. Here at Missouri State, we have two different pre-college programs, dual enrollment, which is the one I oversee, and then dual credit. They're often confused, but there are a lot of differences, distinct differences. Um, so I'll talk about dual credit first. Dual credit classes are taught through a participating high school. They're um, instructed by a qualified high school teacher. Students get college credit at a reduced rate but um, they're limited to what is offered at that high school. So dual enrollment classes are here on our campus and students can take any class that they meet the qualifications for, the prerequisite requirements and the needed ACT or placement scores. So it just opens up a lot more opportunities for those students. Um, there, there are just so many benefits. They do pay the same tuition and fees as other undergraduate students, but they get acclimated to college life. You know, what, what it's like here on our campus. Um, they get acquainted with faculty, staff, other students. They see all the resources that we have available here to help them be successful. They can take enrichment classes art, music, theater, dance, things that wouldn't be offered or aren't offered through their high school dual credit. Um, it's also great for homeschool students who don't have a high school to take dual credit classes through. There are advanced classes, especially math and science, for students going into STEM fields that can give them that extra head start. So 
it's just a great program um, and there's more information on our AATC website and for any high school students that are interested they can also find the application there as well. So continuing on to pre-professional areas, um, I work with our students who are interested in health fields. Campbell Keel in our office works with students interested in law and some takeaways from our pre-professional interests. Um, kind of the number one thing that we have to watch out for is these interests and codes are not actual majors. Students would not receive a diploma saying bachelor's degree in pre-medicine. Um, so we need to help them find a major from our catalog or one of our interdisciplinary programs. That's where Campbell and I come into play. Um, if students come in and have these codes or these interests declared from their application, but truly have a major in mind, we will always recommend that they go ahead and declare that major, meet with an advisor in that program, uh, because we do assign advisors based on declared major, we typically will not assign an advisor to someone who has a pre-professional program declared simply because we cannot make that determination as to which department, which college. Um, and we know that the colleges and departments would like to have those students included in their enrollment and their credit hour production. Um, otherwise, all of that process is through the undergraduate college slash provost's office. So we're here to help them make that choice. Sometimes they have more options than they realize. Um, so if you have students in that situation, we're happy to help. All right, I often say that I have the best job on campus and the boxes that are displayed now show the things that I get to do in my role as the coordinator of transfer initiatives. Regarding that first box, creating and leading outreach efforts, I have what I call a communication plan with these undeclared pre-law or Bachelor of General Studies transfer students. They get a handwritten card from me upon admission to the university as well as communication via email and phone call. The goal of this is to, of course, let them know that they have a contact person at the university, but also to hopefully get them into the university and in an advising appointment as quickly as possible. And this program has had pretty great success the first two semesters that we've implemented it with over 80% of students in this communication plan enrolling for classes at Missouri State. I also maintain the Advisors for Transfer Students list, which has a point of contact for every major on campus. That way, transfer students or those who work with transfer students know who the appropriate person should be for that particular major. The Transfer Advocate blog is something that I maintain. It provides monthly updates regarding transfer resources, news on campus, or upcoming professional development opportunities. And I also monitor the Transfer Advisor at Missouri State inbox, which is just a general inbox for anyone with transfer-related questions to direct those questions to via email. I collaborate with the Office of Admissions to attend transfer fairs. We have three fairs coming up this spring that I'm going to go to with them. Really excited about that, um, but that's something that we'll do every semester. I also collaborate with campus partners on several projects that I'll talk more about on a later slide, but we have that goal with this collaboration to make the transfer process as smooth and po as possible. It's a really difficult process for a person to start at one institution and then transfer to another at any point in their college career. So our goal is to make that as easy of a process as possible and to promote the success of those students when they get here. And part of that collaboration includes the Transfer Advising Committee. I do chair that committee, but every member on that committee is fantastic. We have representatives from every college on campus and a couple of other divisions to not only facilitate those transfer advising forums, but create resources for those that work with transfer students at the university. And lastly, I serve as a partner for the Transitions Living Learning Community, which is a floor residence hall on campus where transfer students get to live together and just to enjoy living with people who have the shared experience that they do. It's a really great way for them to get acclimated to university life and make friends along the way. 
All right, so some of those initiatives that I mentioned earlier are outlined on this slide here. The first of those is a pilot project that the AETC has with the Career Center. So students who remain undeclared for their first semester, if they are a transfer student or assigned a career resource specialist in the Career Center. So they work with that career specialist and myself on career advising, major selection, and course registration. And 87% of students in this pilot program declared a major within one semester, which is very exciting. The Transfer Advising Committee also held a transfer advising workshop last May and a Core 42 Advisor Forum last October. We do plan to have a Core 40, or I'm sorry, a Transfer Forum in March 2023 as a shameless plug there. So we hope to see you there. And lastly, we've worked on celebrating National Transfer Student Week, and I will talk more about that later on. For the past 16 years as the OTC MSU Transfer Specialist, I've served as the liaison between OTC and MSU. I serve as a resource for OTC students, admission counselors, navigators, and administrators to ensure an effective partnership between our two institutions. It is a unique role with the university in the essence that I am nearly full-time on OTC's campus. I have access to OTC academic records. My position combines my passion for advising, my love for admissions and recruitment, and requires detailed knowledge of degree requirements and course sequencing for all majors and degrees at both OTC and Missouri State. Um, I am there for OTC students before they begin their OTC studies through their transfer to Missouri State. I'll review their transfer credit. I work with the admission counselors at OTC to identify courses in their first OTC semester that are most appropriate for their intended Missouri State major. When the student registers, the admission counselor then connects the student via email to their navigator, which is OTC's uh, updated terminology for advisors. Uh, and the admission counselor also copies me on that email. So as soon as I receive that email, I will then in turn reply to everyone and welcome them to OTC, share my role in guiding them and provide specific OTC courses that will transfer and meet their intended MSU major requirements. I'll also provide the most appropriate OTC degree for their intended Attended MSU major. At that time, I connect OTC students to their departmental advisors with Missouri State. Those connections are so important and you are so critical in this process. And I just want to take a second, which makes me slightly emotional, um, to say thank you for everything that you do for the success of our future transfer students. Your role, your willingness to reach out and help those students, assist them before they transfer, make them feel valued and important part of our community. Those conversations, campus engagement, letting them know who their person is, relieves the anxiety of transferring. And every contact, conversation, email, Zoom appointment um, is the difference between our prospective students becoming admitted students admitted students registering and becoming enrolled students, and then really them becoming um, MSU alumni and graduating. Uh, transfer students comprise approximately 35% of our student population, so they are critical and, and a vital part of our campus community. Um, I also assist with the admission process to the university, sharing the process and providing important dates and deadlines, uh, and provide transfer scholarship information as well. I assist MSU students when they choose to attend OTC, whether that is being suspended from the university and providing course equivalencies for grade replacement and your advising notes are so very critical and helpful in that uh, process. Um, and for students that choose to attend OTC because it's a reduced tuition, they can utilize their A plus and, and fail to realize that uh, earlier in their education here or they attend OTC because a course is not available. It's a closed section on our campus where they wanna attend during the summer. Uh, so I guide on that process as well. Uh, to provide an idea of how many students uh, and faculty, navigators, advisors, uh, administrators that I uh, serve in the fall of 22, uh, I assisted approximately 1900 individuals in that semester alone. 
Um, I serve on the MSU OTC Enrollment Services Task Force. It uh, discusses expanding opportunities for OTC students prior to transferring, engaging them and increasing their comfort level when they transfer. We discuss things like the Missouri reverse transfer and things of that nature. Uh, I collaborate with OTC and MSU Academic Affairs, Admissions and Registrar to ensure an effective partnership between our institutions. I'm developing a communication plan uh, in conjunction and partnering with admissions once they're admitted, but my communication plan will be prior to their admission to further expand what my role is for them prior to their transfer opportunities at Missouri State while they're attending OTC. Um, helping with the reality of the size of Missouri State, the perception that it's big and scary, uh, and uh, it's really small if you narrow it down and break it into when they transfer and they're in their major. Typically, they're in one academic building and their classroom sizes are fairly comparable to what they'll experience at OTC, uh, but what is big are the opportunities that await them as a Missouri State student. Um, I uh, also will share that they will receive priority registration as a transfer student, that we've always valued our transfer students and they have the opportunity to register the same time our current students are registering with the same number of completed credit hours. Um, I also assist with event promotion in my communication and conversations with students. I'll share with the navigators for them to display it in their Canvas sites and post it on the bulletin board. So if you have opportunities that you would love for OTC students to join in on Missouri State's campus. Uh, I would love to help promote that and many of our departments head to OTC to promote activities and, and engage with faculty and students as well. At this time we will transition to our interdisciplinary programs with Justin. All right, thank you Donna. Uh, in the Academic Advising and Transfer Center uh, we coordinate two undergraduate interdisciplinary programs the Bachelor's of General Studies and the Individualized Major. And so the Bachelor's of General Studies program uh, is not a new uh, degree option for students. It's been around for about eight years, but I'd like to share information that could be relevant to advisors and staff across campus. Uh, first, this is not a, a degree program that a first time new in college student comes to campus and says, I'm debating, debating psychology, business, and general studies. Um, students who pursue a BGS degree or are interested in it must have completed at least 75 credit hours. So with that in mind, many of these students uh, who seek BGS um, have changed their majors multiple times, uh, haven't really found a good match through um, the first few years of their academic journey. Uh, they also may have left the institution um, and are returning and trying to find a path to graduate. Uh, I can share that right now I'm working with a student who first attended MSU in 1987 uh, and last attended in 2000. And uh, meeting with them, they had over, well over 100 credit hours. Uh, and I'm happy to say earlier this week, they were accepted into the Bachelor's of General Studies program and uh, 30 years later, we'll be graduating from MSU uh, this May. So it's really exciting. Um, Advisement for the BGS program is done by myself, uh, Gates Breedlove, Jenny Caps, and then as Campbell mentioned earlier, if they're a transfer student, she would advise them. There is an application process, an admission process to BGS, uh, so it's important that they meet with an advisor prior to declaring that major. Um, if uh, you're meeting with a student who you feel like could uh, benefit from BGS or maybe of interest uh, with this degree program, you can email us or call us. The email address is bgs at missourystate.edu, or you can call the Advisement Center and they will uh, get that student an appointment with one of us. Um, just so you know, when we're meeting with students who are interested in BGS, we always strongly encourage them to meet with a career resource specialist in the Career Center or speak to a faculty advisor in a graduate program of interest. We like those students to be prepared to, to market their degree, but also many students who receive a BGS degree go on to get a master's degree. And so those options are not closed if they pursue a BGS. Uh, like I said, there is an admittance process, 
uh, there is a committee of four faculty members who sit on that committee across four different disciplines who review their application materials, which consist of an application letter and then a curriculum that is built uh, with their advisor. Uh, so if you have questions about BGS, feel free to reach out to me or any of the other advisors, or if you have a student who may be interested, likewise, reach out to one of us. Now I'll pass it on to Ross to talk about the individualized major. Yeah, thanks, Justin. Uh, so the individualized major is really geared towards students who have a specific career interest or um, an academic interest, and Missouri State University does not currently have a major that will meet the students' needs. Uh, so again, I'm the primary point of contact for the individualized major. Um, I love meeting with students and having those discussions to really help them explore what they're interested in, uh, where they see their future, and then uh, first, seeing if there is something existing at the university. Again, we're a large university with a lot of academic options, so sometimes students uh, don't need an individualized major because uh, we do have something that exists. Uh, but then there are other times where uh, perhaps we don't. And so I would love to have that opportunity to sit down with those students and help them go through their goals, talk about um, academic departments, and uh, start that process of looking into courses from uh, different academic departments to determine uh, how we can make it work for them. Uh, Similar to the BGS program, uh, there is a process that students have to go through. So I often uh, let students know from the beginning that uh, it does uh, take a considerable amount of front end work for a student to pursue the individualized major. Uh, they will need to find a faculty representative from each of the academic departments that they would like to take courses in uh, and then work with those faculty advisors on curriculum, uh, making sure that those faculty are aware of the goals and the courses that are being uh, chosen aligns with the goals. And then ultimately the student will present that proposal in a hearing uh, to those faculty advisors, as well as to me and Dr. Uh, Kelly Wood. Uh, the training and development program, again, many of you uh, on the Zoom uh, meeting today have participated in our Advising Basics and Master Advisor workshops. Uh, we do offer those three times a year in May, August, and December. Um, uh, we also have topical workshops. As Campbell mentioned, we offered a transfer advisor workshop uh, last year. Uh, this semester, Katie Tucker in our office is leading an effort to offer an administrative support workshop. Uh, we have our advisor form series in both the spring and fall semesters. Again, uh, the Most State Advising YouTube channel for those individuals who may not be available over the noon hour for the opportunities um, can always watch one of the recordings and still receive master advisor credit. Uh, we celebrate advising on campus. Uh, it will be on uh, Wednesday, March 22nd at our Master Advisor Reception and Naming Ceremony. We are in the process right now of choosing our Excellence in Advising Award winners, both a faculty award winner and a primary staff advisor. Uh, and we uh, enjoy partnering with other uh, campus offices uh, um, to provide uh, training that we feel could be important for advisors to know about. Uh, if you ever attend an advising conference and you would like to receive master advisor credit for either attending the conference or even presenting at a conference, again, you would just complete a custom submission uh, form on the advisor certification database and uh, I would review that and you would receive credit for that uh, for that event. In this next portion, we're just gonna talk about a few of the events and services that we offer in the Academic Advising and Transfer Center. So we'll talk briefly about SOAR Advisor Training, the Majors Fair, National Transfer Student Week, and then also the Major Minor Certificate Declarations and Advisor Assignment Process. First off is our SOAR Advisor Training Day. So our office does facilitate that comprehensive one-day training for all advisors who participate in SOAR. 
Um, this year, that training day is on Thursday, June 8th. It is a full day, so it starts at about 8.30 in the morning and will go until at least 4.30 in the afternoon. Um, it's appropriate for both advisors who are new to SOAR and have never advised at a SOAR program before, but also for our returning SOAR advisors to update on SOAR session policies and procedures. A lot of the topics that we're going to cover during that day are mentioned here on this slide, uh, but we look forward to seeing both those returning faces and the new ones on Thursday, June 8th. The Majors Fair has been on campus for quite a few years, um, typically held in the fall semester in September. One slight change that we implemented last September was to also really focus on minors and certificates in addition to majors, to really open the fair up to all students, not just the brand new to campus looking for a major, I really bring in everyone who might benefit. Um, it's a great atmosphere, relaxed, fun time where students can meet with faculty and staff, where advisors could come in and learn about other programs as well. Um, the date for this fall is already set as Thursday, September 14th, and we'll be sending out reservation requests later on this semester um, as we get closer to that. National Transfer Student Week is a week-long celebration and recognition of transfer students that happens in October every year. As a shameless plug again for 2023, National Transfer Student Week will be October 16th through the 20th this year. 2022 was the first time that Missouri State took part in National Transfer Student Week celebrations, and I would like to say that while our office does coordinate those celebrations, it is really a campus-wide collaboration, as you can see from the events listed on the screen. So we had at least one event every single day throughout the week. On Monday morning of that week, we kicked things off with free donuts in the PSU to over 100 people. So who doesn't love free food? That was a great time. We had our Core 42 Advisor Forum that I mentioned earlier during this week. We also had presentations from the Career Center and Office of Education Abroad that Wednesday, as well as a taco social for transfer students on that Thursday, and then a pizza party for those who lived in the Transitions Living Learning Community that Friday. My personal favorite part of National Transfer Student Week, though, were the social media spotlights of transfer students at Missouri State. So you can see the six students that we spotlighted throughout the week last year from various departments and transfer institutions. It was a really excellent way for me to get to know them better and for them to share their stories with the university community. So we are looking forward to National Transfer Student Week in October. Please let me know if you have ideas for celebrations or students that you think deserve that recognition. One of the services that the Academic Advising and Transfer Center offers is helping students change their major ad certificates, um, ad minors. So for students to do this, we encourage them to start at our website. At the very top, there's a button how to declare, change, major or minor cert or certificate. From there, it's going to take the students to this next page. Um, they can click on the button, access the online form. This is our preferred method. It's a Microsoft form. It's very detailed. It asks all the questions that we need answered in order to change the major or minor or certificate correctly. Um, there's also a QR code if you want to pass that on to the student as well. Um, that's not our only way. Students can also email our office. They need to be detailed with their request, include their bear pass number, and also send it from their Missouri State email account. And then obviously, if they want to come in person, we'd love to see their face, and they can come to University Hall Room 109 um, to do that. We do not process major changes over the phone. Um, and then also note that if a student's wanting to do a business minor or go into a program such as theater or music that requires audition, they need to go to those um, departments for that um, in Business Advisement Center for the minors. Typically, these changes occur, the students can see that on their audit within one to two business days um, as far as processing. Advisor assignments. We do those based on the direction that we're given from the department or college. Everybody's a little different. Um, if it's from the college, um, if, if the department or college prefers to do their advisor assignments themselves, we do use the advisor unassigned number, so you will see that um, 
on students' records, that just helps keep advisors, advisee lists clean so they don't have an advisee on their, their list that's no longer their major. Okay, and next, uh, I'm just gonna talk briefly about what's new in the Academic Advising and Transfer Center. Um, when we were doing the introductions, uh, hopefully you noticed that uh, we've got a great combination of, of staff members who have been here many years, and then uh, those that have recently joined the Academic Advising and Transfer Center. I've been on campus uh, 18 years. My work anniversary is actually next week, and it's just really a great dynamic that exists within the office office. Uh, our structure has changed. Uh, Justin Johns is in a newly created role, the associate director for the office. Uh, Justin does uh, supervise the four academic advisors. And then we've also structured the office with two coordinator positions, the coordinator for student success initiatives, which is Kim, as well as the coordinator for transfer initiatives, Campbell. And uh, they work on those initiatives within the office, but also collaborate across the university um, to share ideas. And we uh, look forward to collaborating even more in the in the future. All right, so it's been a few years since the first rendition of Mission Diploma took place. And so this last fall, uh, we brought it back with Mission Diploma 2.0. Uh, we considered a new initiative because we did things slightly different. Uh, our goal was to help students really finish what they started. And so working with key stakeholders across campus, uh, we comprised a list of students who um, last attended Missouri State University between fall 2017 and that beginning of pandemic semester, spring 2020. And so our initial list had parameters. Uh, we were pursuing uh, communication with students who had uh, completed 106 plus credit hours, either at Missouri State or a com combination of Missouri State and transfer credits. Um, uh, we had other parameters as well, but initially that list was 339 students uh, based off of some prep work on our end uh, from reviewing transcripts and degree audits and advising notes. We got that list down to 283 students. Uh, myself, uh, Ross Hawkins, Campbell Keel, Gates Breedlove, uh, and Jenny Capps all participated in Mission Diploma 2.0. Uh, and I'm proud to say that through our efforts, we communicated or at least attempted to communicate with all 283 of those students by both phone call and email. Of course, you know, five or six years time frame, phone numbers change, email addresses change, so we couldn't reach every student. Um, some of the exciting things that came about for Mission Diploma 2.0, uh, 10 students reapplied for readmission uh, this past year. Uh, four are currently taking courses this spring semester. We had a number of students express a strong interest in returning, but of course when you get a phone call in the middle of November by a random advisor at Missouri State saying, hey, do you want to come back? They, they have life going on. So uh, many of those are going to postpone that until uh, uh, time allows them to return to college. Uh, something that we're really proud of from our efforts is that nine students graduated in December based off of our communication in the months of October and November. Uh, we were a bit surprised and so were some of the students that we communicated with when we called them and said, hey, uh, you want to come back and finish your degree? And they said, I, I think I graduated. I, I did graduate. And uh, come to find out uh, a number of those students um, didn't complete the exit survey. And so they got lost in the shuffle. Uh, five years ago, they thought they graduated, uh, but uh, their application was declined because they didn't complete the exit survey. And so we worked with Nathan Hoff uh, and a few other people to help get those students the degrees that they earned. Um, something that was really cool was also the utilization of the BGS degree. Uh, three students graduated in December based off of our communication with those students without having to take any additional uh, coursework. And so those students left you know, four or five years ago um, without a degree and, and, and not anticipating getting a degree and then us reaching out to them and, and I guess working some magic uh, to get them a degree, uh, the, the excitement that they had was really, really cool. Uh, this will be an ongoing effort that we'll continue to um, uh, do and so, Right now, we're in the process of getting uh, lists from the year prior of 2017 and also the list 
uh, after spring 2020. So this will be a potential endless pipeline of students that we can help not only get across the finish line, uh, but also uh, invite back to pursue their original degree program, um, or maybe that's a BGS degree. So uh, we're happy to share that though. Two brand new resources, and one of them is so new that it happened this week. Um, we have a couple new websites based on general education courses and Core 42 courses. The idea for these was initiated through a, a staff meeting from our office with Dr. Berkowitz from Religious Studies. Um, we definitely thank him for this idea, where we look at each course and try to help students make more informed choices when looking at general education or Core 42 requirements. Um, we've all probably had at least one student and maybe many more that have asked us, well, what is this class really about? Not just the catalog description, but what does this mean? So we've asked that question. We look at how students can benefit from the course beyond general education, um, have some ownership in choosing it with the real idea that students who make better choices for classes could likely be more engaged, have better success, and help with retention. Uh, these websites are linked through the various websites on campus, through general education website, through our office website, and on the advising resources card in the new My Missouri State system. Those links are out there already. Uh, so if they're there for students, they're there for advisors, for basically anyone in the world who would like to look at them and choose classes. So uh, take a look at those. If you have questions, let me know. We can provide more information as needed. And for the last thing that's kind of new in our office, uh, at the end of last semester, we started kind of reinvigorating how we track our appointment data. And luckily, it was fairly straightforward. Um, like many different offices and advisors on campus, we utilize a third party booking website. For us, we use You Can Book Me, which essentially we can program our own calendar, say the appointment types, and with a link, students can use that to interact and schedule their own appointment. This data is stored in the You Can Book Me website, and you're actually able to export it as an Excel report. So with this knowledge, we just took the time to redo our calendars, be more intentional about the different types of appointments that are available using consistent wording across calendars. And by doing that, at the end of every month, we're now able to export a report and look at both per advisor and across the whole office, the total number of appointments, types of students we're seeing, the modality that students are choosing, whether they prefer Zoom or in-person. We can also track the ratio of cancellations and no-shows. And we just started this. So for now, any like long-term trends we're waiting for, but hopefully in the future, we can kind of compare trends and pivot and manipulate the data however we want to look at academic year to academic year and term to term. And finally, I have the exciting job of wrapping up our presentation today, just previewing what's to come in the AATC. So these are projects that are currently in the works. Uh, the first thing is the Jumpstart Financial Incentive. Earlier in our presentation, you got to hear from uh, Kim Stagner, who coordinates our Jumpstart program, she had the exciting opportunity to participate in the Summer Bridge Community of Action program that was offered through the Missouri Department of Higher Education and Workforce Development. And while participating in that program, she learned that a lot of other institutions who have Summer Bridge programs were providing financial incentives to students who participated. Um, at this time, we're not able to offer Jumpstart for free, but Kim is committed to researching opportunities to reward students who meet those academic criteria to continue at Missouri State in the fall. Next is our Academic Advising and Transfer Center Advising Assessment. So we are in the preliminary stages of implementing formal uh, assessment of advising in a way that we've not done previously. We're really modeling our process of what our peer institutions are doing and being informed by the NACADA core competencies and the CAS standards. And we're hoping to begin our data collection uh, in May of 2023 and move forward with that new advisement assessment cycle. Um, next, the Advising Basics online module. Ross mentioned this one earlier. Uh, those who aren't aware, the Advising Basics is a workshop that we offer a few times a year. It's really aimed towards individuals who are new to the role of advising, helps get them started with best practices and navigating the Missouri State systems. 
we have found that there's been a real need for individuals to be able to access that information more often than we can offer an in-person workshop. So we are formatting an online opportunity so that anyone can access that information when they need it, and hopefully that will be hosted on our LMS system. And lastly, just previewing um, something new we're doing for SOAR. Uh, we have three SOAR groups. We primarily advise the undeclared students and the individual review students. Um, this summer, we're going to have them check out before they leave SOAR. And at that checkout process, they will assigned advisor is. They'll receive that assigned advisor's contact information and will already have their first advising appointment scheduled within the first few weeks of the semester. Those 15-minute appointments are really intended to help build the relationship between student and advisor, give them an opportunity to touch base, get to know each other before academic questions arise throughout the semester. And that's it for what's to come at the AATC. All right, well, that concludes the prepared part of our forum today. Uh, being mindful of time, I see that it's uh, right at one o'clock. Uh, and so knowing that many of you probably have a one o'clock appointment or place to be, uh, unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna have time to go through the Q&A portion. If you've asked a question, whether that's of the Academic Advising and Transfer Center or a, que a question directly uh, to Zora, what we're gonna do is, if it's for Zora, we'll forward it to Zora. Uh, if it's something for us, we're gonna answer those questions and comprise a list of all the questions and answers and then uh, email that out to uh, all 59 people who are still, uh, well, 48 people, sorry, or plus uh, that were in attendance today. Uh, we thank you for your attendance today. Uh, I'm going to pass it on to Ross for any closing remarks. Yeah, I'll just echo what Justin said. Thank you for attending today. And please know that you can reach out to the Academic Advising and Transfer Center uh, anytime that you have questions or concerns or would like to collaborate on a project. We are, we are definitely here for you all. Thank you.